The Human Neanderthal Hybrid Children. What happened to them? Scientists just confirmed the first ever Neanderthal human hybrid child skeleton, and it reveals our ancestors didn't just meet Neanderthals, they had families with them. For decades, scientists debated whether humans and Neanderthals could produce viable offspring together. Many experts insisted that these two human species were too different genetically to reproduce successfully, like horses and donkeys creating sterile mules. But groundbreaking discoveries in the past year have completely shattered this long-held belief from a 28,000-year-old hybrid child burial in Portugal to revolutionary new DNA analysis techniques. Researchers are uncovering evidence that forces us to completely rewrite the story of human Neanderthal interactions. These aren't just academic curiosities, they're revelations that force us to confront uncomfortable truths about who we are as a species. The children of these ancient unions didn't just survive, their genes live on in billions of people today, affecting everything from our immune systems to our risk of depression. Chapter 1. The Child with Two Species In May 2025, researchers made a stunning announcement that sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Using revolutionary new dating techniques, they confirm that the Lapedo child, a mysterious skeleton discovered in Portugal 27 years ago, was indeed a human Neanderthal hybrid who lived approximately 28,000 years ago. Being able to successfully date the child felt like giving them back a tiny piece of their story, which is a huge privilege, said Bethan Linscott from the University of Miami, who helped lead the effort to pinpoint the child's age. The Lapedo child was first discovered in 1998 inside a shallow rock shelter in central Portugal's Lapedo Valley. Archaeologists immediately noticed something unusual. The four-year-old skeleton had a puzzling mix of features. The limb proportions resembled those of stocky Neanderthals, while the skull and jaw showed characteristics of modern humans. For years, scientists struggled to determine the exact age of the child's bones. Contamination from roots and soil made traditional radiocarbon dating unreliable, but using a groundbreaking technique called Compound Specific Radiocarbon Analysis, CSRA, researchers were finally able to isolate specific amino acids from the bone collagen, overcoming the contamination issues. The results were definitive. The child lived around 28,000 years ago, right in the window when both humans and Neanderthals inhabited Europe. This timing is particularly significant because it suggests that hybridization between the two species continued much later than previously thought. This discovery confirms what genetic studies have been telling us, that humans and Neanderthals didn't just coexist, they formed intimate relationships and had children together, explained Wong Zilion from the University of Lisbon, one of the researchers involved in the original discovery. Chapter 2. The Burial That Reveals Two Cultures Perhaps even more fascinating than the child's hybrid status is how they were buried. The skeleton was covered with red ochre pigment, suggesting they were wrapped in a special burial shroud. Nearby, researchers found the bones of a juvenile rabbit, also stained with the same red pigment. The careful burial suggests this child was valued by their community, said Lynn Scott. This wasn't a case of a hybrid being rejected. This was a child who was mourned and honored in death. The burial practices revealed in the Lapido child's grave combine elements seen in both human and Neanderthal traditions. Neanderthals are known to have buried their dead with red ochre, while the positioning of the body and the rabbit offering align more with human customs of the period. If you're finding these discoveries about human Neanderthal hybrids fascinating, hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss our upcoming videos on early human ancestors. What's particularly striking 
is that the site appears to have been abandoned for over 2,000 years following the child's burial. Researchers suggest the location may have been marked as taboo or sacred after this significant death, showing how deeply the loss affected the community. The study of where humans came from is important for the same reason we keep the portraits of our parents and grandparents, said Zilho. This child's grave shows that multiple human groups carried on shared traditions. It reminds us that cultural practices like careful burials may have spanned diverse communities. Chapter 3 The Genetic Legacy that lives on. While the Lapido child provides physical evidence of hybridization, genetic research published in December 2024 has revealed even more about the timing and consequences of human Neanderthal interbreeding. Two independent research teams using different methods both concluded that humans and Neanderthals began having children together around 50,000 years ago, earlier than previously thought, and continued for roughly 7,000 years. We've known for some time that non-African populations carry about 2% Neanderthal DNA, explained Dr. Janet Kelso, a computational biologist at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology. But what's fascinating is how this genetic legacy has shaped human evolution. Some Neanderthal genes appear to have been beneficial to humans, particularly those involved in the immune system and skin pigmentation. These genes actually increased in frequency over time, suggesting they provided evolutionary advantages to the hybrid offspring and their descendants. Other Neanderthal genes, however, appear to have been harmful. Studies have linked certain Neanderthal genetic variants to increased risk of depression, addiction, blood clotting disorders, and even more severe COVID-19 symptoms. It's a mixed legacy, said Kelso. Some Neanderthal genes helped our ancestors adapt to new environments as they spread across the globe, while others have contributed to disease risk in modern populations. Chapter 4 The Fertility Question One of the most persistent questions about human Neanderthal hybrids has been whether they were fertile. If they were like mules, the sterile offspring of horses and donkeys, then the genetic legacy of these pairings would have ended with the first generation. But the latest research conclusively shows that hybrids were indeed fertile and capable of having children of their own. The pattern of Neanderthal DNA in modern humans can only be explained by multiple generations of backcrossing, hybrids having children with either humans or Neanderthals. What we're seeing in the genetic record is not just a one-time mixing event, explained Dr. Joshua Aiki, a geneticist at Princeton University who published groundbreaking research on this topic in early 2025. There were multiple episodes of interbreeding over thousands of years, and the hybrid offspring were clearly able to reproduce. This fertility is particularly remarkable given the significant genetic differences between humans and Neanderthals. The two species had been evolving separately for hundreds of thousands of years before they encountered each other again in Eurasia. We now believe that humans and Neanderthals were at the edge of biological compatibility, said Aki. They could produce fertile offspring but there were likely challenges. The genetic evidence suggests that male hybrids, in particular, may have had reduced fertility compared to females. This pattern, known as Haldane's rule, is common in hybridization between closely related species. It states that when two species produce hybrids, if one sex is absent, rare, or sterile, it's usually the heterogametic sex the one with different sex chromosomes, which in mammals is the male with XY chromosomes. Chapter 5 The Disappearance Mystery Despite the evidence that human Neanderthal hybrids existed and were fertile, Neanderthals eventually disappeared as a distinct species around 40,000 years ago. What happened to them, and why did their genetic contribution to modern humans 
remain so small, just 2% on average. The latest research suggests a complex process of genetic purging, the removal of harmful genetic variants through natural selection. When humans and Neanderthals first interbred, their hybrid offspring likely carried many incompatible gene combinations. Think of it like trying to merge two different computer operating systems, explained Dr. Aki. Some combinations of human and Neanderthal genes simply didn't work well together, leading to health problems or reduced fertility in the hybrids. Over generations, natural selection would have removed these problematic gene combinations while preserving beneficial Neanderthal genes. This process explains why Neanderthal DNA isn't evenly distributed across the human genome. It's virtually absent from genes involved in male fertility and certain brain functions. For example, the demographic reality also played a role. Modern humans likely outnumbered Neanderthals significantly. So even with regular interbreeding, the Neanderthal genetic contribution would have been diluted over time. It wasn't a simple replacement or extinction, said Dr. Kelso. Rather, Neanderthals were gradually absorbed into the larger human population through interbreeding, with natural selection shaping which parts of their genetic legacy survived. This more nuanced understanding of human Neanderthal interactions challenges the traditional narrative of superior humans replacing primitive Neanderthals. Instead, it suggests a complex story of two closely related species meeting, interacting, and ultimately merging with consequences that continue to shape human health and biology today. As we continue to uncover more about these ancient hybrid children, we're gaining a deeper understanding, not just of human history, but of what it means to be human, a species shaped by multiple ancestral lineages, adaptable, diverse, and far more complex than we ever imagined. To watch the latest on how early humans lived, click this video here.